Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Secret World. So, last time we had a pretty massive bit of info dump over all the various weapons in the game, and the basics of the uh, action skill system. And we ended up uh, with a shotgun, and the decided that we're going to try to go for the Enforcer deck, combining shotgun and chaos. So, now that we've finished that up, it's on to continue our training with the Illuminati. So, your combat skills will have to be sharp in the field. Oh, and that's the, th the thing that we just finished, which is telling us to go to the, to the test chamber. So, now we're on our way to the office of Kirsten Geary, our primary contact. And yeah, we'll start running again by... All uh, water coolers else. have now been laced with LSD. And yeah, as we run around the Illuminati area, you will periodically hear the PA system say some pretty hilarious stuff. Grab another piece of lore. Hello, Kirsten. Yeah, it's like that's all. I fucking love old school hip hop, don't you? Projecting indecision is a big no no. Always smile. But this isn't another test. We don't do probation. You're either in or you're out. The Illuminati are very achievement focused. It's like Xbox, only everything is hardcore. The ethic I really want to instill in you is to aim high and achieve even higher. It's not just in your best interest, it reflects on me too, and that is super important. Make me look bad, I'll mount your head on my wall as an object lesson to the next fuck up. God, it is so cute when you new guys think I'm kidding. Solomon Island. A little town and a preppy school with connections to us have kind of vanished off the coast of Maine. The people aren't a major deal. Do you know how many disappearances there are in the United States every year? We do. But our noses need to be totally clean on this one. The military are involved, and we have limited bandwidth to stall the shit heels at the DoD. Give an old dude a red button to press, it's like Viagra to them. I want you out on Solomon Island to assess the impact on our bottom line. You can skip the traffic and the quarantine by traveling through Agartha. Just use your initiative, but not too much initiative that comes across as desperate. Ciao, ciao. And so we've got our very first mission, which is to head off to Solomon Island, off the coast of Maine, and find out what the hell is going on. You'll notice over here that there is actually mission another mission here. And this is actually the mission to acquire one of the auxiliary weapons. You'll can see that it is rated as devastating, which means you probably should not be doing it. And it also says that you are not yet trusted enough for this assignment, which means that we basically need to increase our rank with our faction, which is currently the lowest rank, which is why we have just have the standard Illuminati symbol. We could put our title as Gopher, which is essentially what our title currently is, if we wanted to. Off we go! And there's a little tutorial message about sprinting. And again, there that's this is roughly the area, let's see, right about here, where other factions will be blocked off from entering. So we've discovered the warehouse. And now we go to the entrance of Agartha. Those of you familiar with uh, the mythology may know what Agartha is. It's basically the theory that the Earth is hollow, and uh, you can read a lot more about it on the Wikipedia. Picking up a lore here as we go. They said there was a warehouse. And into a car. Yes? Now this is the Hollow Earth, Agartha. I do hope you're not here for the local service. It's running somewhat tardy. And by my watch, it's 100 years overdue at quarter past the hour. 
Judging from the cut of you, you're more of a world traveller. Well, you've come to the right place. Now, this underground realm, like the great British rail system, is the very model of efficiency. Agatha's thoroughfares sprout from the tree of life and connect back to the surface. Distance and time bend in here. Why, you can cross the globe in a brisk walk. Of course, it's perfectly safe. No one's entirely sure how it works. Quite bedeviled, the science boffins, but I'm assured they have their top men on it. Top men. Now you'll need one of these. Mind your fingers. Thank you. Fascinating devices. Fortunately, they're still enough to hand out like sweets. Consider it your anchor to the hollow earth. It can return you here in a flash, proverbially and quite literally. Well then, onwards to the New England coast, what? And we are now at Agartha, and we have received our Agartha conduit, which, again, to use the wow analogy, is basically your hearthstone. It, uh, I believe, has a 30 minute cooldown and it will teleport you right back here and uh, just by clicking on it. So you'll find it's frequently quite busy here uh, as this is the main hub for the game. Behind us, you have the portals to each of the three major cities Seoul here on the right, uh, London in the center and New York here on the far left. You also, uh, and then down each of these, sorry, down each of these paths here is basically uh, portals to each of the game's major zones. Now obviously the game does not consist of this many zones yet, but it's a rather clever way of uh, making the game easily expandable without having to, you know, completely remodel maps or add new, you know, paths through zones and such. Cheerio. So we will grab the lore here. Yes, you can stand on these lily bits. And then as, as we approach, there's this concentric rings kind of zooming into the middle. And this basically means that instead of having to walk or run all the way down this wooden path here, we just have to walk into it, and it zooms us right to the next portal, which makes traveling a little easier. So here we are at the very first portal for uh, the Solomon Islands, where we are off to Kingsmith Town. And we have arrived inside some sort of ruin of a boat. And as we come out of the Agartha portal, and I do want to make a note here, it is at this point here, once that you've entered Kingsmith and kind of got that little achievement there, uh, that you are able to uh, work with the friends list, send people tells, so on and so forth. You're kind of semi-locked out of some of the social features until this point, simply because, you know, because you don't have all the you know, various tools to actually play the game until this point. They don't want to get you too lost. So this here is essentially a resurrection point. Uh, if you die in the vicinity of, well, if you die anywhere on the map, you, your body, you, well, your spirit will come back to the nearest one of these and you'll have to run back to your body. Um, I'm sure we'll show that to you at some point when we eventually die, uh, but no need to go through it now. Onward. Oh, don't worry, kid. You haven't gone back in time. I just happen to be the last of the cowboys. Got your southern welcome right here. Mesquite beans, Texas style. Good ought to face evil on a full stomach. Name's Boone. I'm a troubleshooter. You and I need to have a powwow before you go shooting for trouble. Illuminati may have legacy on Solomon Island, but you folks gave that up for the high life and the low road. 
Sure, you can be divided in purpose, but we gotta stand united against darkness. This ain't my first rodeo. I know we're gonna need all the unity we can get. Don't mean to say you stepped into hell, but when the wind blows west, you can just about smell the brimstone. All we know is death and fog came from the sea, or someone brought it back with them. And if I was a gambling man, I'd put money on that someone still being around. Bunch of survivors holed up in Kingsmith Town. Follow that main road and the sound of gunfire, and you'll come to the sheriff's office. Kid, whatever your reasons for being here, you find out what those people died for, and you bring a reckoning. Alright, so we've progressed our main quest here, which is Dawning of an Endless Night. Kingsmith, a once peaceful town in New England, has been overrun by the living dead. The survivors are holed up at the sheriff's office. Question them to learn more about this undead infestation. Tier 1. Jack Boone talked about how death and fog came to Solomon Island from the sea, and that someone brought it back with them. He believes that someone is still around, and that whatever the reasons anyone might have for being here, they should find out what the fog is, how it came, and what the painful of Kingsmith died for. He said that the few survivors are mostly gathered to the east at the sheriff's office in Kingsmouth. So our objective is to go to the sheriff's office in Kingsmouth. So, this will also be kind of our first introduction to the questing system at large. So you'll notice that our story quest here has this cyan-colored button with a movie reel icon. And then Jack Boone has a quest here with a red icon kind of a running man with a gun icon on it. And you'll notice that we have one here with a red background labeled main mission. So we're actually able to, we have an available slot here so we can pick up Jack's quest for a fistful of zombies, which we will do so. Jack Boone has a zombie problem. He shoots them, but they keep coming back. Finding out more about the zombies, which makes them tick, can go a long way towards solving that problem. forest crawls. Gets my fingers itching for two matters. One, the other, figuring out a way to keep them down. It ain't right the way the dead walk the earth. They deserve their six feet same as everyone else. I've sworn to keeping guard here, and you've got places to be. But nothing's stopping you from culling the herd as you go. Hell, figure out what makes them tick, and how to make that ticking stop, and I'll buy you a beer at the apocalypse. So go on, kid. Saddle up. The end of the world waits for no man. So you'll now see that we have our quest here for our story mission and our quest here for our main mission. And you can switch which one you want to track just by clicking on it. So, tier one, Jack's camp is literally surrounded by zombies. Help keep their numbers down. Kill zombies in the area around Jack's plant, zero of six. So this is basically just go kill six zombies, which you know, pretty might you know pretty boring slash flash flat start for a game. I mean, you expect to minimum to go kill X of Y. But it does get interesting almost immediately to kind of show how this game differs from the others. And I also want to show you, now, well, before I forget, the map for the area. And you'll see this is in a completely different style than the New York map, as it's kind of more of a, uh, I guess you could say, tour guide or pamphlet look here. Um, with this map, we also have some more interesting features I kind of want to point out. So we have the giant red circle here, which shows where the, um, the kill zombies were, which, excuse me, which is our main mission. Then we have a cyan X, which shows where we want to go for our story mission. We have these little white circles with a blue square and a white kind of person icon, I guess you could call it. And these indicate people in that area that can actually give you quests. 
then we have these little cir white circles with blue dots in the middle, and those are anything that you want to put on there, shared across characters. So you right click, you add marker, you enter the name of the marker, there's your marker on the map. So if you ever want to make a note of something, you can do so, which might be reasonably important because some quests you'll have to go track down where something is, and you might want to just mark it for future reference. This white uh, circle with concentric blue circles inside is a resurrection point. So that's that's the one that we found, you know, up near the ruined boat. And we'll find more as we as we kind of explore the island. Uh, the only other thing up here is this area here, which is kind of burned out, you can see. And this is what's called a lair area. And this is where very high, um, I want to say level, but it's not really level, but anyway, high difficulty mobs are. It's essentially an open world dungeon where uh, people with QL10 weapons and groups and such can go and kill areas, get a mission to kill, or kill areas, can basically get a mission to kill the zombies or you know, whatever the low level minions are and eventually get a boss that they can take out. So that's the basic map. And off we are to kill some zombies. And I know some of you are going, yay, finally. You actually get to shoot something. There's some information about looting. Go up to the zombie and we're going to shoot him. Because we've got our shotgun. If you're over, we can... um, <laughs> we do damage to multiples of them. There we go. Three zombies down didn't take too much damage. Getting some XP here on an XP bar. There's a blue line going across. There's a yellow tick mark here and here, which indicate the point at which we get an ability point. And we get a skill point and an ability point when the bar goes all the way to the top, at which point it resets. The bar is constant in terms of it's always the exact same amount of XP per ability point and per skill point, no matter what your essential level is. So no matter how many skill and ability points you're at, the amount of XP you get is constant. Also, the amount of XP you get for each of the kills is also constant, no matter what the relative difficulty of the mod mob. So you could come back here and you know go through these mobs and do these quests again uh, with your really high level and well really high level because the vertical regression is really short and you would actually um, still get abilities and skill points for it. But the reason you wouldn't necessarily is because in general the, the areas which are not um, as easy provide more XP so you'll be gaining ability and skill points faster that way. So we're on to tier two. We've killed our six zombies. Now we got to find out how zombies lead, react to loud noises. Jump on abandoned cars on the roads to Kingsmith to trigger their alarms. Engage the zombies' reactions. So anybody who's ever seen any kind of zombie movie or played a zombie movie would probably know what's going on. But the interesting part, see, this car doesn't have a little red light on it. We actually want to find one uh, that does. I think this one does here. Is they're showing you that jump, and on car, alarm goes off, now we got to kill zombies alerted by the car alarm. Is it too hard to do? And we got six. Now, one thing you may not know is that Whenever you see a car in the zones with that little red flashing light in the windshield, you can jump on it to attract zombies. Intentionally or unintentionally. So not only is the quest immediately mixing things up by making, you know, not just kill to six zombies, it's kill six zombies after doing this, kill six zombies after doing that. Um, for example, here's our next tier. Zombies are attracted to loud noises. Now find out if zombies are affected by fire. Ignite gas cans found on the road and draw zombies into the fire. So this shows you another thing that you can do. You can find zombies, you can get their attention, and then you can go over here and use items in the world. This is probably not the best idea, but I'm gonna have to set that off in a bit. Because 
because otherwise they keep hammering at me and the skill use uh, bar keeps resetting. And you'll notice I got a uh, ability point now for going over that yellow tick mark. So, in fact, one thing that they're kind of hinting at here, because there's a car here with a red light flashing, watch this. Use the can of gasoline. Okay, we'll ignite and jump on the car. Not only does it set off the car alarm, attracting zombies to the fire, thereby comboing the two things. The thing that we just learned with the cars with the new thing. Now I'm on fire, which is not necessarily an ideal situation to be in. But fortunately, you know, I recover pretty quickly. Onward to the next tier. So the fire affected the zombies, but it didn't stop them completely. Next, investigate their feeding habits. Examine one of the half eaten corpses on the side of the road. And as we're running along, we notice here's something with a green icon with a box on it. These missions, if you'll notice the color, matches up with three side mission slots. So we can have three of these at a time. These don't have cutscenes associated with them. They're pretty small and for the most part are intended to give you something additional to do in the area or to take you to another quest giver. This one's bullets for Andy. Normal difficulty. A note on the dead policeman's hands asks him to get more ammunition and then return to the sheriff's office ASAP. The policeman obviously can't return, but the ammo is still direly needed. Tier 1. The note says, don't try to be a hero, just get all the ammo you can find and get the hell back here. Lives depend on it. The note is signed, Deputy Andy. The sheriff's office in town is clearly in distress. You better grab the ammo from the pickup and find Deputy Andy. So we're going to accept that. And the ammo is right here, so we're going to pick that up. And our next is to find Deputy Andy. But we're also got this red quest here, so we're going to switch back to the red quest before we go to Deputy Andy. And we want to examine one of these half eaten corpses here. But first, we got to clear it of this. And examine the half eaten corpse. Kill the corpse gorger. Big baddie. And you can see that white chalk outline with the other white chalk outline slowly filling it. That indicates an ability you want to employ. So the outer white chalk line shows the extent and area of which the ability will affect. The inner one is essentially the casting bar. So when the two chalk outlines meet, then the ability will go off and you probably don't want to be inside it. So now we're going to go look for survivors in Kingsman Town. The tutorial that it was noting was the ability for you to dodge. Now you have two options. You can double tap a direction to dodge, or you can hold down shift and hit the direction to dodge. Now I can't dodge at the moment because my active dodge bar is recharging. But if you're finding yourself in one of those white chalk outlines, you need to get out fast, then do that. And actually it's hold direction, then tap shift to dodge out of the way. Sheriff, Solomon County Sheriff's Department. So it should be now recommended. Animal Well, Elm Street. So we've changed which animal well. Or it's given us a new animal well for us to resurrect at if we were to die, which is this one here. Now, we've finished our very first quest. And you'll notice over here is send report. So you know that cell phone that we got? Well, instead of having to run all the way back to the Illuminati headquarters, or in this case, um, back to Jack Boone, to turn in the quest, we just click Send Report and use our phone to send a report back to the Illuminati headquarters telling them, hey, this is what we discovered about the zombies. They give us a bit of flavor text, which varies depending on which faction you are. And you get uh, your rewards, and sometimes, like in this case, the ability to choose a reward. Good job. Your findings fit with what we know about the reanimated dead. They're a total bitch, but you should have no trouble outwitting them tactically. We're familiar with two types. The recent dead are quicker, the long buried show less spunk, but pose a more significant numbers problem. 
The big breed, the corpse gorger, that's not an aberration we've seen before. Either that was the captain of the football team, or we're dealing with some form of mutation. Ciao, ciao. So, this is where, when I mentioned uh, in the previous video, that you want to get two weapons, and we didn't have to worry about getting another one for the training room, because they give us our choice of weapon here. There's actually another quest almost immediately after this where we can get an upgraded one of our original weapon or another one. So you don't have to worry too much about picking your secondary and worrying about when you're going to upgrade your primary. So what we're going to do is, because we are going for chaos, we want chaos focus here. Now you'll notice that this is a QL1 weapon, and in red it says requires chaos skill 1. So we're going to collect that. And you'll remember, I yeah. you'll remember I mentioned that I was holding on to that skill point, and this is why. Because now that I've got my Chaos weapon, I can't actually use it until I have a skill equal or greater than the Chaos weapon's quality level. But since I banked that point, I can now put a point into the Chaos because I've now got that at first, and immediately equip the weapon without having to, say, go out and do another quest or kill some zombies to get another skill point to equip the weapon that I just obtained. So Chaos has two tracks, damage and survivability. Um, Chaos, by the way, is also kind of the tanky magic ability. So, damage, calamity. Your Chaos abilities have a 10% chance to trigger the calamity effect dealing 31 magical damage, so you have a chance to deal additional damage on hit. Survivability. When you evade an attack, you receive the Fleeting Fortress effect, causing the next attack against you to deal 18% less damage. So, chaos tanking, as you can see, is probably going to be based around evasion. So we're going to put a point of damage, because we really just want to you know, hit things really hard. And, we still have our two points here. So, in order to actually do something with our chaos weapon, we're going to buy a couple of points. And we can, let's see, what do we got? We can grab a Builder and a Passive. Or we can get a Passive and... Well, they're both Builders, so... We may not be particularly interested in equipping each of them immediately. Um, but, Call for Eris here is a Chaos Resource Consumer. And it's only 3 AP in, so let's actually progress towards that. Uh, we probably, even though it automatically equipped it, we probably won't use Hand of Change that much. But we will grab um, Call for Eris next time we get an, an AP, which will allow us to consume the resources that we're building with the Builder. Because as you'll remember, this Builder builds resources for both of our weapons at the same time, which is good. Now, not all abilities do this. Uh, healing abilities, I think, are the exception, whereas a healing builder will only build the weapon for, or build the resource for the weapon that the ability is for. So, while most of them will build it for for both, just keep an eye on that and uh, you know be careful about what you pick sometimes. So now that we've got our chaos weapon, equip it, and it shows up on our back. So now we have bullets for Andy which is Fine Deputy Andy. In this case, he is going to be on top, up here. Hello, Deputy Andy. You spooked the heck out of me. Place the ammo I figured in the I was ammo fresh box. Out of scares. Use the ammo box. And that's basically one of those little box missions or side missions encounter. So we will send a report. And the box missions almost always have the exact same flavor text at the end. Uh, in this case, for the Nadi, your field report has been received and is currently being analyzed and evaluated. Thank you for your cooperate contribution. We will con contact you if more information is needed. A reward and cash bonus has been credited to your account. So this gives us Pax Romana, which is the cash in the game, the in-game, uh, and we get a sequence of Solomon Island which is essentially tokens, and you'll use tokens at vendors to buy uh, weapons and trinkets, or, sorry, talismans. Alright, so now all we have left is go to the sheriff's office in Kingsmith. Hector.
Heck if I know where you folks keep coming from. But anyone who walks through that door alive pretty much gets my amnesty. Something in your past colors you sourly to a badge, I'd ask you to call it quits in return. We agreeable? Well then, I'm Sheriff Bannerman, and this down-home little state of emergency is what's left of my jurisdiction. Sure, we tried to hold as much of the town as we could at first. More out of nostalgia than any civil defense plan. I won't tell you Kingsmith was a slice of heaven in a snow globe, but it was ours. Now it ain't. There was always something running under in this town. Maybe what's spilled out now. If that's how it works, I couldn't say hand on heart we didn't have it coming. But that fog, and the things in it, they didn't pick and choose when they came in. Most folks didn't stand a chance. Now, I can see you're armed. I won't kick up any fuss about that. Straight truth is, you'll need to be. Just don't go thinking that means you're deputized as such. Heaven knows if there was ever a time and a place for the right to bear them, you're looking at it. Henry has his word of God, that Roger woman has her crystal ball, and Norma out on the points got a 12 gauge. My money's on Norma. All right, so our story mission has progressed. Tier two. Helen Bannerman is in a state of emergency. Most of Kingsmith is gone, overrun by fog and zombies, and she was happy to see anyone armed and ready to fight. There was always a darkness to Kingsmith, she said, and she believes there's a chance that may have brought this upon themselves. So locate Kingsmith survivors to learn more about the fog. Now, again, this is a case where the map is not going to tell you where to go. By locate kings of survivors to learn more about the fog, they literally mean go find some survivors you can talk to and learn more about the fog. So that could be either very you know various conversation options. Now come back without a piece out of you. You know with with the and yeah, that's telling us about computer interfaces which we don't need to know about quite the moment. Um, but any of these dialogue options, or just necess you know, if you go close to one of them, they may trigger the cutscene for the next uh, tier in the story mission. Let me get rid of this uh, real quick. We now also have an ability point, which means we get our call for Eris, which is our consumer. And I'm going to. Well, I can leave it there for now. It's not harming anything. And we're gonna again bank our skill point because I want to hold on to them until for whenever we get our first QL1 talisman, so I know which one of the talisman areas to stick it in. So, uh, well, I think at this point it's a pretty good place to call it, um, just because you know we're about to pick up our next quest. And uh, I want to reiterate this game is not like other MMOs and kind of is exemplified by this starting area here. Because as you'll notice, Helen here has two quests, uh, only the first of which is available. There's a little lock icon here on the second one. Uh, there's a Don't missing persons list, which is a quest. There's a complaint report, form, okay? which is a quest, though it's locked at the moment. And if you go outside here, there is yet another side quest. Uh, Moose here has three quests, two of which are locked. You go upstairs. Uh, Andy here has two quests, one of which is locked. And yet, all we have is space for one of those red missions and three of those green missions. So, what do you do? I mean, normally in most MMOs, you'd be running around, you'd be grabbing missions from everybody. But in this game, what you want to do is you want to grab, essentially, a single quest. Now, in some cases, you might want to grab uh, more than that, just depending on where the quests send you. For example, what, for our next uh, video, we will probably grab the quest here from Helen and grab the missing persons list, just because you know the missing persons list we can work on while we're doing this one for Helen. Uh, but once we take that quest from Helen, we will have. Um, you know, one taking up our main mission, and we can't grab the, the quest from Moose or the quest from Andy. And, you know, your, your normal MMO reflexes are, you know, grab all the quests and go do all the quests. But what'll happen is, at the end of Helen's quest, 
we will end up at or near either another quest giver or one of these green uh, quests in the world. So what you do is you take a quest, you finish it, and then you end up at a place where you can grab the, another quest. And you'll do that one, and again, it will end up near another quest giver or near another quest. And you just do that. And basically, the quest will take you kind of around a tour of the island, or a tour of the area, where you'll be able to get, you know, eventually all the quests done, but you'll do it kind of in a, in a roundabout way, so you're constantly moving around the area and, you know, only really focusing on one at a time, which I believe, you know, is great because it helps you focus on the story of each individual quest and know what you're doing and why you're doing it. So anyway, uh, we will call it there and we will pick it up again next time with some quests. We may get into a little bit of crafting uh, and potentially some uh, information on, ta on uh, talismans and, and others. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed, and we will see you next time.